are here again. Going to take a wee break from Bread of Fire 3. Instead, try a little Black Closet. A game I played a while ago. A long time ago, only for a few hours. Thought I'd give it another try. Uh, Black Closet is... It's a game. It's a video game. It's one of those. You might have heard of video games. They're ever so delightful. Uh, the premise in that will come up pretty quickly actually, once we start. So... Basically, you're a student council president and in an uh, elite boarding slash high school and you gotta get... Is it a spooky game? No. I don't think it's that spooky. Maybe it is spooky. Let's start up. Let's start normally. Welcome to your new office, Elsa, and congratulations. As student council president, everything here belongs to you. For now. I'm Elsa, by the way. Um, what we say? It is an honor and a privilege. I hope you'll remember that in the weeks ahead. The privileges of your position come with a great deal of responsibility. It is your duty to manage the student body and prevent scandals while maintaining their belief in your good nature. If you are too aggressive, then the karma of the student council will be damaged and your classmates will no longer obey you. If you let them get away with everything, then the reputation of the school will be damaged. Can't be that many scandals. Did you really have so little idea of what you were getting into? No nice words here, Elsa. This school is in peril. We have enemies who would like nothing more than to smash this ivory tower to rubble, and scandal is their greatest weapon. If St. Claudine's falls, every graduate, every board member, every good traditional family will be tarnished. The school board will do whatever they must to defend themselves. As student council president, you are their designated scapegoat. Your family background, you are not old power. You're a talented upstart, nothing more. If disaster looms, you are a perfect sacrifice for the greater good. I won't go down without a fight. Put that energy into doing your job. If you maintain the reputation of St. Claudine's, there will be no need for a sacrifice. Fail as president and you will be expelled unable to achieve a place in a decent university. Your future will be ruined before it even begins. But keep things running smoothly and your time at St. Claudine's will be a benefit to your resume. Of course, you will have the rest of the student council to assist you. A commander never gets her own hands dirty. You will need to rely on the skills of your minions to handle your caseload and find the truth behind the rumors. Read your case files to determine targets. Then set out assignments for your minions to take actions where they will match their skills against the skills of the target. Let's look at an example, shall we? Click on Anne to select her as a target. Anne is a new target, so you haven't learned what her skills are yet. Her skills will be revealed when you take action against her. Let's question her. For this example, I will be playing the part of your minion. Click on my card and the question action. Then click assign. 
wait, what? Wait, okay, there we go. Anna and Elsa, indeed. Assigned actions are placed near out tray. If you wish to cancel an assignment, you can click on its position in the out tray to clear the assignment. When you've made your assignments for the day, click done to begin the investigation. Anna says, um, was there something you needed? You may now harass Anna. Hmm. Poor wording. Actions use different skills. You can see what skills will be compared by looking at the icons on the sides of the action buttons. Try choosing the harass action to press Anna a little harder. Alright. Anna squeaks, I'm sorry, I'll get to class right away, and scampers off. Harassing is more like pressing, really. If the skills of the minions you assign is not sufficient to conquer the target, you may get incomplete or misleading reports and need to try again. Check your case log to review the case of clues you have gathered. Now for your final instruction. It is important that we are not disturbed. Assign some students to stand guard over this location. You can assign multiple minions to the same task. They will use the best available skill for each situation. In this case, Emmy's intimidation will combine with Danielle's observation. Oh, I select both and then do that. Okay. I remember this. The students stand guard outside the office. Now, let us speak clearly. You are the leader here, but you are helpless without the skills of your minions, and that creates a weakness. A weakness which someone intends to exploit. One of your minions is a traitor. How do you know that? Intercepted communications. Internal documents which are not for a student's eyes. Not even yours. One of them is working against you and will intentionally fail her assignments whenever possible in the hope of causing scandal and bringing down the school. You must determine which of your minions cannot be trusted or she will destroy them. Destroy you. Spend time with them. Socialize. Do what you ever you must. Manage your karma. Defend the school's reputation and identify the traitor or else your career will come to a quick end. Good luck, Madam President. She leaves the office. Your office. A symbol of your power and of the expectations others have placed upon you. Will you live up to those expectations or surprise them all? At me, it me. When you reach the student council office, Vaughn is already waiting for you. Oh, there you are, Elsa. Everything is in order. One of the chairs had a rip in the cushion, so I had maintenance swap it out. All the flyling slots are clean, and there's a fresh box of pushpins by the bulletin board. You didn't have to do all that. I intend to do my job well. Being vice president, means more than just waiting for a chance to step into your shoes, Captain. Why are you calling me Captain? You, you don't remember. Captain rolls off the tongue more easily than Madam President, don't you think? 
There is a sound at the door. That must be the other officers. To tell Elsa that she has to. Oh, you're already there. And what were you going to tell our president? Well, I don't mean to be rude, Vaughn, but all things considered, it's not right that you are vice president when my big sister is so much more qualified. I don't want the job. You didn't want to be president, that's fine, but you deserve. Thais, not interested. You're a natural leader. She has the personality of a secretary. Fun was elected. End of story. Oh, fine. Be stuck in your dusty old ways. Youth will overcome. You'll see. The door opens again. Um, hello? Is this the student council room? Yeah. Oh, good. I found the right place. I'm Mallory. I'm the hospitality officer. Oh, right. New girl. Be respectful to this young lady. It's your first year in student council, too. Yes, but I've been at this school since kindergarten. She just started as a freshman. Well, I think it's lovely to see some new faces. Thanks. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mallory. It's nice to meet you too. I look forward to working with all of you. Aren't we missing someone? What about Rowan? She's already here. Uh, uh. Well, for all here, let's get started. I'm not going to force her to open up. Now that your minions are assembled, it's time to open your case folders and see what this week has in store. Alright, reminder. Only one minion at a time can be f sent to fetch supplies or boost skills in the training room. Alright, new case. The Baroque handbag belonging to April has vanished. Locate and return the handbag. April last remembers seeing it in either her room or the algebra classroom. Also, both Michaela and Tiara were admiring it recently. Let's see now. So what should we do? See, the thing about this game is, with these cases, sometimes it's not as obvious as it seems. Even this first case seems pretty obvious, right? Like one of the two girls, Michaela or Tiara, took it, took the bag. But it's entirely possible that April just lost the bag be honest. So, let's see. We have Altea question Michaela. And then we'll go Rowan to inspect April's room just in case the bag is there. We'll have Vaughn check the algebra room. Mallory can question T. 
Kiara. And we'll have Tyus check out the supply closet and get supplies. Michaela says she hasn't seen it. There we go. We found a handbag. April must have dropped it. We get five karma. And Thias found an animal decoy and requested a private meeting. Oh good, you're here. Sit down, make yourself comfortable. Um, this won't take that long. I just thought I should point out that I'm not a servant. My birthday parties have been detailed in the society pages since I was 13. My calling cards were engraved and registered within a week of my birth. So fetching supplies, it's beneath me. Hmm, I don't hear your sister complaining. I am not here to talk about my sister. This is like about me. I am simply pointing out that you are wasting my talents and I won't stand quietly by. Your concerns are noted. So glad that you're willing to be reasonable. Ta! Now that she's made her point, there is business at hand. The animal decay adds 10 to the stealth score. Let's see. Only one girl can train at a time? Okay. Fine. Okay, we've five pints we can put into different stats. Like, do you bolster poor stats, or do you just focus on the stats you're already good at? Or even the ones that are in between, you know? I'm going to boost observation up five for Mallory. Meanwhile, Vaughn found a hall pass, which is another stealth boosting item. Okay, Rowan has come into my office carrying a large box. Delivery. Put that down before you hurt yourself. Alright. She sets the box down carefully. Why were you carrying that by yourself? Miss Talmadge told me to take this to you. Do you know what it is? One bag organic gold Colombian coffee. One classic style French press silver monogrammed. One tea set gold trim. I didn't order these. I was told to deliver them to you. Would you like a cup of coffee? Students aren't allowed coffee, except you. Yes, but would you like one? I... I insist. Alright. The two of you quietly sample your new acquisition before the official council activities. <laughs> Rowan is shy. Altea, fetch us some supplies. A wooden ruler. Adds to our intimidation. A 
a riding crop even more kinky. Binoculars. We're finding all sorts of good items. Well, you know, this is a fancy boarding school. They have riding crops for horses and the like. You can keep track of your minions' successes and failures to try and pinpoint who's the possible traitor. Uh, the traitor changes with every game, by the way. And we can visit someone. Oh, I don't know who I should visit, though. Um... Hmm. Let's visit Rowan. We've already... Did I stress Rowan out by making her drink coffee? No, uh... People's stress goes up when you... Assign them to any activity. So you can't rely on one person all the time. If you do, they'll take days off to recover. Yes. I've come to invite you to tea. Alright. Rowan follows you to the student council office. She must be waiting for you to speak. She's not saying anything. Have a seat and I'll pour the tea. Okay. You prepare the drinks and set out the gold rimmed teacups. I have no idea what Rowan would like. Oh dear. <clears throat> Cheese and crackers. Thank you. Rowan arranges the food neatly on her saucer, but makes no attempt to eat it. Silence. How is your school year growing? It's fine. What's your favorite class? Uh, history. Why do you like history? Because your stories of people and they're complicated. It's interesting reading about other people's lives when they're true. You notice that Rowan's snack has disappeared, although you can't remember ever seeing her take a bite. Are you loyal to the council? Do you enjoy being on the council? Do you? It's a responsibility. Yes. Moments pass and it becomes clear Rowan isn't going to say anything else. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Rowan's loyalty increases by five. Let's visit Vaughn, our Vice President. Seems like someone good to get on our side. Elza, hi. Did you need something? I've come to invite you to tea. Oh, alright. Thank you. That sounds lovely. Vaughn follows you to your office, looking back and forth as she enters. I wasn't sure if anyone else would be here. What would you like to drink? Really, I can take care of that. You should sit. I'll prepare the tea. If you insist. Vaughn prepares tea and shortbread for both of you. She's managed a fair approximation of the right amount of milk for your cup too. Very important. Vaughn sips from her cup and smiles at you. So here we are. It is nice to have a chance to sit and relax between crises. But there's something on your mind, isn't there? Is everything alright? Me? Is that what this is about? 
Do I seem unhappy to you? You look lonely sometimes. Do I? Well, maybe I am, but I know where my duties lie. Vaughn rests her fingers on the edge of the table. This is a strange tea party, isn't it? I suppose we should talk about hats, or hairdressing, or politics, all similarly frivolous. Why do you call me Captain? Keep thinking, you'll get there eventually. She sets down her teacup. I really should go. I need to study. Thank you for your time. And tea. Thank you for coming. Alright, it's a new week. So we probably have a new mission. Yep. Strange moaning sounds have been heard coming from the auditorium at night. And rumor suggests it may be haunted. Investigate. Ooh, and another case. Urgent. Jeanette reports that her roommate Vera never returned to her room last night. Her whereabouts are currently unknown. She may be lost, or injured, or even kidnapped. Does her best friend Carl have any information? Alright. Uh, we'll search Rowan. We'll set Rowan on the auditorium. Mm, yeah. Clearly she's hiding in the auditorium in mourning. I've considered that as the as the twist. That these two cases are connected. We have Altea question best friend Carol. Mm. Yeah, and Vaughn can search Fira's room. I guess it wouldn't hurt to have Mallory question either. Let's see what we get. Okay, nothing happens in the auditorium. Carol says, I think she said something about a private party. No clues in Vera's room. Vera has returned, but where was she? That's strange. And Vaughn has arrived at my office for a meeting. Captain, there's some paperwork you need to fill out. If I'm Captain, what does that make you? I... that's up to you. Right now, it makes me the person handing you a form. Yeah, I do it myself, but it asks for your personal information. Parents' address, birthday, all that. Thank you, Lieutenant. You're welcome. Oh, that made her happy. If you finish it quickly, I can have it delivered and returned in time for today's assignments. So, I'll see you then. Alright, fear is back. Hmm. We'll have Altea question Vera.
but have Thias, Guard, the Auditorium, see if anyone tries to come in. Actually, we'll send two people to talk to Vera. So we can get the maximum benefit. Yeah, you have to be a girl. This is an all girls school. You stand guard by the auditorium. At one point, you think you hear footsteps approach, followed by a gasp. When you go to look, no one is there. Was it a ghost? Probably not. Um, I was out doing stuff. This is suspicious. No kidding. Let's have Thais get the truth out. And we'll have Mallory play good cop. Ah, uh, we don't need to send out Mallory, I think, actually. We'll just give her Thais the wooden ruler. And we'll have Rowan search the auditorium. And Mallory can check Vera's room. There we go. Use the binoculars to up the chance of success. See what happens. Fine, fine. I won't leave campus again. This is a creepy school. Quietly search the auditorium. Find a single glove lying discarded in a corner. And now Mallory has a meeting. Ah, uh, hi. Thank you for seeing me. I'm always happy to talk to my officers. Of, of course you are, because you're good, and you're the president, and the student council does good things, right? We act for the greater good. I just... This isn't what I was expecting. I thought it was really nice of everyone to make me the representative when I'd only just started at the school. I was looking forward to helping people, not to being a bully. We are harsh with them for their own protection, Mallory. Well, yes, but I mean, sometimes. I'm sorry. I'm overreacting. It's like being a parent, isn't it? I promise I'll do my best. Now that she's made her point, there is business at hand. Hmm. Stake out. I know, uh, my vice work is just too good sometimes. What have we got, Rowan? Nothing happens? A lemon? Boo. Lemon is minus five to all. Alright, so if nothing's here, Tyus can guard. the help of Mallory. And here's the thing, you can't discard an item, I don't think. 
so you'd have to use it. At some point, you have to take the hit and go, oh, okay, I'll use the lemon. I think that'll work. And then Altea. Oh, the inventory's full, see? So we can't get any other supplies for now. Nothing happens. Alright. Let's visit Altea. Well, hello there. Looking for me? I've come to invite you to tea. Why, Elsa? Is this a date? I suppose you could call it that. Now I'm intrigued. Very well. Lead the way. Altea follows you to the office, then holds the door for you as you enter. So here we are. Tea or coffee? Either is fine. No, wait. I'll have the coffee. It's the president's private stock, isn't it? Milk, no sugar. You prepare the drinks and set out the gold-rimmed teacups. Shortbread. What's this? Interesting. I suppose I'll try some. Yeah. I'll be un I'll be unhappy no matter who the traitor is. Altea picks up her cup and takes a sip. So, what did you want to see me about? I want to get to know you better. We've known each other for what? 14 years. However long we've both been residents of this fine establishment. You've even been to my house, even if it was back in lower school. I know you exist, that doesn't mean I know you well. So what do you want to know? Are you really interested in all those girls you chase? No, that's rude, very rude. Don't ask that. Don't ask anyone that question. Don't ask anyone if they're really a lesbian. Come on. That's right, there's no canon, traitor. What are you planning to do after university? Business, I suppose. Company management. I'm sure my family will point me in the right direction. Thankfully, with things the way they are, no one expects me to have a career in politics. Altea takes a slow sip, holding the cup to her lips for moments afterwards to forestall conversation. You're a very pleasant hostess. But unless there's something specific that you need, I should get going. Maybe we can do something later? I suppose. By then. Loyalty up. Let's hang out with Mallory. Good weekend! I've come to invite you to tea. A tea party? Do I need to dress up? Should I wear a hat? You look perfect just as you are, Mallory. Thank you. You look very nice too. Okay, I'm coming. After you. Mallory tags along behind you to the student council office and waits while you open the door. It's too quiet in here. Have a seat, Mallory. I'll pour the tea. Thank you. We prepare the drinks, set out the gold rim teacups. Pink frosted cupcakes. Ooh, cupcakes! Mallory picks up the teacup and takes a careful sip. Burn your tongue? 
I know better than that. It's just different, that's all. Thank you for preparing this for me. I know you must be very busy being president and all. It's a big change coming to a school like this, but everyone's been really nice to me. What's the biggest difference you see here? Not seeing my parents. And no boys. I... Doesn't it drive you crazy sometimes? Not being able to go out or have a room to yourself? It is hard sometimes. I know, right? If you keep an animal penned up too long, it just pines away. Their feathers fall out. It works the same way with people too. People can lose their hair from stress. She reaches up to pat her shining copper curls. Still there. Phew. You must miss your old friends. Yeah. But, you know, new start, new friends. Were you ever a Girl Scout? We had a song about it. Make new friends, but keep the old. One is silver, the other gold. Does that mean new friends aren't as good? Uh, that's the spirit. I'm good at team spirit. Mallory looks up at the clock. Oh, thank you for the tea, but if it's okay, I should probably go. Maybe we can do something again another weekend. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye! See, if there are five items in your supply tray, you cannot visit the supply closet until you use up one of those items. The well-known best friends, Catherine and Myra, have been conspicuously avoiding each other. Make sure that nothing is dramatically wrong. Cornelia has reported hearing scratching noises while she's trying to sleep. Is there some sort of animal loose in the school? Okay, Myra and Catherine are fighting. have Rowan stake out the room for the weird noises or whatever. Who should inspect? Fawn with the lemon. Someone has to use that lemon. Altea stake out the mysterious room. Catherine's jealous because Myra named and made a new friend. door down the hall creak open and then immediately slam shut but you don't see anything you don't find anything interesting but it's too close to call whether that was actually a success or a failure there may not be anything interesting or we may have flubbed the roll nothing happens at the auditorium okay Myra made a new friend, huh? So let's see. Okay. Like to see the dialogue during the juicy stuff? Yeah. We kind of only get the cliff note summary of what's gone down.
There we go. Is the red circle intimidation? Yes. Which is a problem because I don't usually want to use intimidation very much. Oh wow, no chance of winning? Huh. Guess we won't do that then. Blue is observation, green is socializing, black is stealth. Give Mallory a rest. You notice that Myra is spending a lot of time with Dolores. Is that her new best friend? We may now question, harass and stalk Dolores. Students see you searching the auditorium and wonders if you're searching for ghosts or bodies. Council gains one karma, school loses one reputation. Find a single glove. But we found that before, it doesn't really explain much. Cornelius says it must have been a mistake. I'm not hearing anything now. Hmm. Don't know about that. Mallory, you should question Dolores, the new best friend. Let's see. Let's send Vaughn to the supply closet. And then Altea and Rowan question the roommate. Of course I'm friends with Myra. Isn't she lovely? Hmm. This game does have an absurdly powerful student council. Okay, Alberta heard the weird noises. We failed the Phantom of the Opera. Too much time had passed. Hmm, let's see. I want Rowan to stalk Cornelia. She seems to be hiding something now. Mallory stalk Dolores. Stalking now is my go-to plan, I guess. I stake out the upper dorm outside the bedroom. Let's see what we discover. Let's see, we've noticed Cornelia and Imogene having a whisper discussion. Dolores reveals nothing.
failure. Hide and watch quietly. At one point you hear a door down the hall creak open and then immediately slam shut. But you don't see anything. Miss Talmadge has arrived at my office for a meeting. This probably isn't good. Good afternoon, Elsa. I hope your regular investigations are progressing well. However, that's not why I'm here. Now that you've had some time to mingle with the girls and watch their behaviour, do you have any leads on who the traitor might be? It's too soon to be certain, of course, but perhaps you might have identified a prime suspect. Who... Damn it, I don't remember who found the lemon. I suspect whoever found that lemon in the supply closet. But I don't know who that is. So... Uh... No. No one stands out. Really. I do hope that's a sign of you being cautious and not one of undeserved loyalty. Don't be misled, Elsa. One of those girls is lying to you. And she will make you pay the cost for her deception. Whatever the case, time is not on your side. The traitor must be exposed and expelled before the Harvest Festival. That means on October 24th, you must be prepared to deliver a final verdict. You cannot investigate each student equally. Focus your attention on those who seem most suspicious. Build their loyalty, learn their secrets. The school board is counting on you to make the right decision. I'll leave you to your work. Have I played this before? Yeah, I've played a few hours of this. In the past. Imogene. Imogene, you seem to know something. Did I beat the game? No. I have not beaten this game. Matthias, start harassing. Figure out what's going on with this friendship. Uh, I, uh, noises are only natural, right? I'm sure it's nothing. May now search Imogene's room. Good. Fine, have it your way. I'll stay away from Mira. Um... <laughs> With Dolores out of the way, maybe Mira and Catherine can patch up their relationship. Do the girls have set personalities? I think their personalities are set. Let's visit Matthias. Oh, Elsa. Oh, like, what do you want? I've come to invite you to tea. Oh, well, all right then. Whoops. Not mean to do that. <clears throat> you lead your, you lead the way to the office and hold the door for Tyus as she enters. Um. So, have a seat. I'll pour the tea. Ugh, common tea? I'd rather drink water. Green tea is so much better. Wait here, I'll be right back. You sit and wait while she returns to her room to fetch her tea chest. There. Here, I'll pour your water. Hmm. You prepare the drinks and set out the gold-rimmed teacups. Cucumber sandwiches. Just one for me. I'm not really hungry. Ty sips delicately from her cup and settles it back in its saucer. Um, so was there like something you wanted to talk to me about? This isn't about my sister, is it? I wanted to talk about you. Oh, alright. Um, what did you want to know? Why do you make yourself up like that? Rude question. Don't... Don't like asking questions like that of people. Did 
There's more to her than being rich and snobby? Probably. That depends on what happens while I'm at university. I couldn't tell you yet. I have some ideas, but, well, I'm like not going to be a ballerina or an actress. I'll tell you that much. Tyus twists her cup around on its saucer. Um, so I still don't understand why I'm here. What do you want from me? Do you want, like, a makeover or something? I want to be your friend. Whoops. With dolls and tea parties? I am not a toy. What's wrong with dolls? Um, nothing. It's the people who are wrong. Thanks for the tea. I'm leaving. That went well. Hmm. I'm pretty confident Altea is not to trade her. Rowan's also done pretty well. Let's go see Rowan. You go to Rowan's room and knock on the door. Would you like to go to the planetarium? Does it cost money? Only if we go to a laser show. I don't really want to see lasers. Alright, we can go. You head to the science museum, where you bypass the super high definition movie displays to walk into the largely empty planetarium. The seats are large and comfortable, and it's not at all difficult to find two of them together. You lean back and wait. Eventually, a program unfolds, detailing the search for planets outside our solar system. The narrator's voice is dry but knowledgeable. She's far more pleasant to listen to than your own physics professor. As best as you can remember the introduction, she's a head researcher at East Coast University. You wonder if she'll ever see an exoplanet with her own eyes. Outside, after the show, you can catch Rowan yawning out of the corner of your eye. Were you bored? I was distracted. What were you thinking about? People. I was imagining, I was thinking about a story, and my mind wandered. What in God's name is this music? The best music. What kind of story? I, people from other planets, and like, if you found out one day that you were from another world. Sorry, it's dumb. I think we should go to, back to school now. Trying and failing to harass a suspect usually leads to a loss of karma. A successful harassment will still lose karma if the suspect is innocent. New case! Urgent! Harriet reports that her roommate Lona never returned to their room last night. Her whereabouts are currently unknown. She may be lost or injured or even kidnapped. Does our best friend Cameron have any information? Mura, the top art student in our class, is due to unveil her newest work at a special presentation for the Board of Trustees on October 6th. Make sure the painting she has designed is appropriate. I think Cameron did it too. Actually. <laughs> Let's have Mallory question Cameron. And I'm just going to have Rowan search the room. Ooh, that's not a good, that's not good odds. I don't like that. We won't do that then. Whoa, sorry, I keep getting the menu.
Altea, go to the supply closet. Get me some supplies. She's an art student, of course it's not going to be appropriate. True. Use the riding crop. Maybe. Actually. Let's see if we can get the truth out of Imogene. And we'll send Vaughn to the training room. And Rowan can have a nice day off. Roll these dice. I'm sorry, I don't know what's been going on with Lona lately. She's been inviting me. Harriet might mourn no more. Jewelry. Okay. I'm not telling you anything. That is suspicious. Let's see, let's boost. I want to boost Vaughn's stealth. see if Rowan can find anything in the room. I don't think she will, but... Okay, a roommate might know more. Mallory, question the roommate. Fawn, check out the supply closet. And everyone else, take a break. Damn it, got caught ransacking the room. Lost five karma. We found a hidden kitten. Pets are not allowed on campus, so Imogene is forced to send her kitten to her family. Whatever, we solved the case. We're awesome. I know she was unhappy at school, but I never thought she'd really do it. Do what? Clever disguise. Nice. Alright, Rowan, search the room. Always do the opposite of what CC says, absolutely. Bear crab is not to be trusted. Hmm. Actually, no. Let's have Rowan search the room. Now we'll use that riding crop. Altea, check the supply closet. What is the red bar? Stress? Yeah. If that red bar fills up, that character will take a few days off. Ah, we find Lona's diary, which talks about her favorite places to go in the city, especially the cathedral. This is a clue. You may now explore the city. Moore says, if you're going to make such a ridiculously huge deal out of it, fine, look at my painting. She shows you a painting of a baby threatened by pills and needles. This is completely inappropriate. You've got to talk her out of displaying this. You may now persuade and detain Moore. Baseball bat. Nice. Let's send Mallory out to explore the city. Hmm, actually you might want to send two people out for that.
Yeah, I will send Mallory and Thias out to explore the city. And then we'll have Altea try and persuade Mura not to use that lovely painting. How about that? Go to the city cathedral. Yeah, let's search for Lona. There she is. Can you catch up to her before she sees you? You sneak up on Lona and drag her back to the school. Mission accomplished. Whatever about her emotional problems. Boring. We try to convince Mura to paint something else. She says, Maybe you're right. I need to consider my audience. She agrees to prepare a more appropriate painting for the board meeting. I wouldn't worry. Bear Crab has no feelings. An envelope is sitting in the student council in tray addressed to Elsa Jackson, care of St. Claudine Student Council. It's not an assignment from Miss Talmadge. This came through regular mail. There's a stamp and a postmark, but no return address. Inside the envelope you find three kiosk printed photographs. A picture of you walking down campus, taken from some distance. A picture of a window set in a stone wall like the walls of the school buildings. And a zoom in on that window at night, just enough to make out the familiar confines of your own bedroom. The last item in the envelope is a mate, mate black rectangle of heavy cardstock, the size and shape of a business card, but entirely without text. The only mark printed on the card is a teardrop of red in one corner, small enough to cover with your thumb. Whoever sent this, they wanted you to be aware that they now know where you sleep. No other clues to go on, the only thing to do is set it aside for the moment and go on with your work. Alright. Vaughn, get supplies. Rowan, train a little. I'm suspicious of Vaughn. I think Vaughn might be the traitor. I think Lechnaut sent the envelope. Lechnaut is the traitor. Secret traitor option. One person here is a traitor. The traitor will try their best to fail any task you've given them. I believe Vaughn has twice produced lemons from the supply closet, which are the result of a bad roll. Um, if it was anyone else I'd suspect it, it would probably be Rowan, but I'm not so sure on that yet. You go to Vaughn's room and knock on the door. What would Vaughn like? Maybe she is worried about scurvy. Maybe. This place is gloomy. There's not much sunlight. A what? Well, I suppose, as long as you don't expect me to perform. We can be the audience. I am happy to volunteer for a mission of cultural exploration, Captain. Shall we? The coffee house is a warm, intimate space filled primarily with students and young professionals. The two of you in your white uniform stand out from the crowd, but not enough for anyone to stare. She's wearing the school uniform, Bear Crab. Jeez. Since neither of you are performing, you can stand in line together to get your drinks and choose a table. 
the artists get better seating so that they can mount and dismount the stage more quickly. But it's not a large establishment. Even the lesser seats are close enough to the action. You sit back and relax as a procession of poets, philosophers and one performance artist in the closest term you can think of take the stage. Vaughn seems politely interested in most of the acts, murmuring her opinions on one or two for your ears only. I do like poetry. It's soothing the way that words are ordered when rhyme and reason and scansion are in step. But the best poetry to my ear is also very old-fashioned, soothing but not exciting. Some of the acts we've seen tonight, I feel like I ought to appreciate them more than I actually do. Oh, well, I can't expect an artistic breakthrough on every evening out. Perhaps we should come again another time. If you like. Hmm. Thank you for a lovely evening, Captain. I'll escort you home. Loyalty up. Every girl in this game has a different uniform. It's true. For an oppressive boarding school, there is a... There's a lot of freedom in uniform options, I guess. Mm. Let's check out Altea. We knock on the door. Would you like a picnic, Altea? A picnic? Well, that could be interesting. Alright, I'll meet you outside. You head out onto the school grounds and look for a place to spread your blanket. A secluded location. You find somewhere out of the way where you're less likely to be interrupted and set your blanket in the shade of a tree. A few minutes later, Altea arrives, eager for privacy. Mm -hmm. Are you afraid to be alone with me? I'm never afraid. Altea lounges across the blanket, one elbow propping up her weight. So, what do you have on offer? Wow. Schrodinger's picnic basket. Hamburgers and fries. Really? That's just... Really? She sighs. If you're going to eat food that tastes like paper bags, you should at least be doing it in the back seat of a red convertible. Why not the front seat? Because I'd be driving, and you don't get shotgun. Not yet. You settle in to eat your food. It's quiet here, and the meal passes in companionable silence. Still, you notice Altea's attention seems to be elsewhere. Something on your mind? Nothing in particular. I was just looking at the trees, wondering how long they've been here and how much things have changed. In a place like this, change comes slowly, but it still comes. After finishing her food, Altea relaxes, taking in the outside air. You know, Elsa, sometimes. Sometimes I wonder if we keep to ourselves too much. Not the council, the school, all of us, this place. They've set it up as an ivory tower. It's supposed to give us the best opportunities. But how can it be the best when there's so few to choose from? All these rules and regulations, all the reputations we have to keep up. They think they know what a proper young lady ought to be and they try to cut everyone down until we fit that shape. They want us to excel, but only in the fields that they think matter. And there's too few of us. It's too easy to be the best. Without real competition, there's no point in even trying. 
that why you didn't run for president? Huh? Do you really think you would have had a chance if I tried? I ruled this whole class when I was just a little girl. Everybody wanted to be in my gang, my gang, wanted to be in my gang, my gang. And you were part of it, Elsa. You, and Louisa, and Catherine. You can't have forgotten. Maybe you didn't always do everything I asked, but you were still mine. So I had all that. But it got boring, so I stopped. Why should I bother trying it again now? Altea climbs to her feet and stretches. Thanks for the picnic. I'll see you around. Students tend to object to having the student council break into their rooms and search them. Whatever. If you get caught, you will lose a lot of karma. School property has been defaced in the field. Trash has been deliberately scattered all around. Investigate. Portia. Portia? Portia has been heard saying that her friends Kara and Olive are planning a surprise that will shock the entire school. Investigate urgently. Okay, we gotta stake this out. We'll have fun do that. Porsche? Okay, that's good. Thank you. We'll have Mallory talk to Portia about this potential plot. Rowan can stalk Olive. We'll see what's going on there. I think the other two can rest. See what Vaughn finds out. Too close to call. I'm beginning to suspect Vaughn. Portia can't tell us. That would spoil the surprise. Followed Olive, but didn't learn anything new. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Maybe I shouldn't suspect Vaughn. It seems like this is a difficult one to pass. Rowan should... Oh, no. We don't want both of them to stalk Clara, Cara. Yeah, stalk Cara, find out if she's doing anything with this plot. Let's stake out, see what's happening there. Tyus, get some supplies. You're going to see the conclusion tonight? Maybe. I don't think the game ends at the Harvest Festival. But that would seem like a good place to stop. Don't learn anything new, stalking. Don't see anything interesting. Found some perfume. Mallory has arrived at my office holding a small box. Hi Elsa! I brought you something! present for me? Well, it's not exactly a present, and it's not exactly for you. She opened a box to reveal an assortment of apparently homemade cookies. See, it's my birthday today! 
please, oh, mommy, send me a care package. And I thought it would be nice to share with the rest of the student council. So, here you go. You can give them to the others. Happy birthday. Thanks. Anyway, I'll let you get back to work. Bye-bye. says I. Oh no. Let's see. Talking didn't work, talking to them doesn't work, so that means, yeah, didn't remember my birthday, does that mean I just have to be a bit nasty? Baseball bat. on, get me some supplies and not accidentally open the menu again. Stand around for a while. Suddenly Mabel comes up to you and apologizes for accidentally tipping over the trash earlier. Oh, okay. So that was the solution to that. It wasn't actually vandalism. Portia and her plans ca or and her friends carry out her plan, a pretend zombie apocalypse, where they all stumble around talking about brains. Looks like it was harmless after all. That didn't go well. We have a lot of lemons. A lot of lemons and no cases. Let's talk with Mallory. It's her birthday week. You go to Mallory's room and knock on the door. Would you like to go to a movie? A movie? Sure! Can we go right now? The cinema front is decorated with posters for various films and a marquee of showtimes. I'll pick a film, you get the snacks. You may wish you hadn't said that when you see how big the popcorn is. She grins and walks off leaving you to pursue, or peruse, the list of titles. Currently on offer are animated children's film, something about gangsters, something with guns and opera singers, a historical romance, and some sort of dance film. Let's pick The Dragon's Pilot, which I assume is the kids movie. You buy your tickets and proceed into the theater together. You settle in to watch an animated adventure about a fantasy world where tame dragons are used for commercial air travel, carrying pods of passengers strapped to their bellies. A young girl wants to become a dragon pilot. Her parents disapprove. She accidentally releases a dragonling from the training pens, and mayhem ensues. In the end, she becomes an unlikely hero and receives a kiss from a handsome prince in thanks. Mallory's first reaction to seeing sunlight again is to break out in a yawn. That was pretty cool, wasn't it? Underdog rises to power, I approve. I guess you could look at it that way. 
and you an underdog? You always seem so, well, in control. It's not easy. Well, you do a good job. Mallory dusts off her skirt. Thanks for coming out with me. It was fun. Really, I should probably just be focusing on a few peoples. But I like the variety of stories, so... We're gonna go to Thais' room and knock on the door. Open night? You mean, like, we get to perform? That sounds like fun, actually. Wait, are you going to perform? If inspiration hits me. Um, well, I'd rather you didn't. It would distract from my spotlight, you see. One beautiful young schoolgirl all in white. That's a novelty. Two is a field trip. Two means comparisons. I'd win, of course, but it wouldn't be the same. Tosses back her hair. Anyway, shoo. I have to get ready. I'll meet you later. Thais arranges her performance slot while you carry the drinks back to the table. When her turn comes, Thais walks onto the stage with her head down, her long hair hanging over her face. All of a sudden, her head snaps up. Her eyes blazing. I am the orange with the razor inside. I am the poisoned kiss. She goes on like this, piling up colorful and violent imagery with manic fervor. Several short-haired college women in the audience look practically entranced. At last, she cuts off her poem in what sounded like the middle of a phrase and freezes in place, her hand upraised then slowly lets it fall. As the audience applauds, Tyus walks back to your table. Um, I think that went well. Don't you? Is that crypto-gothic third wave-ism? Um, passion is not intended to be overanalyzed. It simply is. Tyus sits back with her drink to watch the rest of the lineup perform. Thanks for coming here with me tonight, Elsa. I, like, really appreciate it. And you should appreciate it as well. You've witnessed a limited edition performance? No, no. No autographs. Speak to my, uh, manager. I am your manager. Well, for the moment. Mm, I believe we should be, like, heading back now. Hmm? Mustn't overexpose. Let's go. Alright. Rumors indicate that there may be a gambling ring at work in the school. Check out the English classroom for evidence. Annabelle and Adele came to class recently with suspicious similar suspiciously similar injuries. Have they been fighting? Pokemon cards, the work of the devil. This game is entirely about snitching. God, use up one of these lemons. And get a better item. No. Technically, still have five items until I use the lemon. Okay. What's happening in the English classroom? Find some discarded notes. Not candlestick. Not lead pipe. Not dagger. What? They're playing... Clue. Cluedo. Did Del put you up to this? Leave me alone.
Annabelle got what was coming to her, that's all. Fun. Now get some supplies. And we see what's going on. Nothing happens at the English classroom. Annabelle doesn't seem to notice you following her around. You spot Adele nearby, glaring at her. Vaughn find another lemon? Yes, she did. Lemon party. Oh, don't worry about making that joke. As you're waiting, the girls from the new board games club show up and invite you to join them. Apparently there is no gambling ring after all. get some information on Adele's weird stalking. She glares. Fine. Annabelle and I had a stupid fight. She started it and I taught her a lesson. If she comes near me again, I'll do it again. This is worrying. I may now persuade, detain, suspend and expel Annabelle or Adele. Crystal Ball. Annabelle came to school with a black eye. Are you concerned about your performance? No. I'm not really. I mean, poor performance means I don't get as many skill pines to invest in the characters, so it's worrying in that sense. Annabelle's willing to apologize if Adele is, even though Adele's a jerk. Found a sedative. I don't know what that's about. Mm. Spend more time with Vaughn. You go to Vaughn's room and knock on the door. Let's go to a movie. Of course. I mean, I'm not too busy. I would be happy to accompany you. I'll pick a film, you get the snacks. Understood, Captain. Little 
Dolce Suono. You purchase the ticket, and when Vaughn returns with the snacks, you go into the theatre together. You settle in to watch a movie about an aspiring young soprano whose opera career is boosted by her willingness to undertake assignments from secret government organisations. She mingles with the internationally rich and famous, finally landing an invitation to an exclusive diplomatic event in Cold War Russia. Unfortunately, her cover is blown, and while she escapes with her life, her jewels and some important secrets, a knife injury to the throat ruins her singing career forever. <clears throat> After a pause to visit the restroom, Vaughn follows you outside. I wonder if that's the only way they could convince the average person to watch a movie about opera, filling it with spies and gunshots. They could have used orgies. Mm. Do you like opera? It's not my favourite of the classical forms, but there are some lovely pieces in the repertoire. That movie was named after a famous mad song. It's the one she sings when they're cutting back and forth between her two lives. In the original, the soprano has just gone mad and murdered her unwanted husband. I suppose the blood and guns are fitting after all. We had better see about getting back now. Mallory. You go to Mallory's room and knock on the door. Would you like to go on a picnic? Sure, I love picnics. Are there grills somewhere? Can we have a cookout? I brought a picnic basket. Oh, that's fine too. Anyway, picnic sounds great. Just give me a moment and I'll be right there. You head out onto the school grounds and look for a place to spread your blanket. The public location. What's a cookout? You wander across the sunny lawn until you find soft, thick grass to hold your basket. A few minutes later, Mallory arrives. This is nice! It's so pretty out here! I shouldn't stay out too long though. I didn't bring sunscreen! She drops down onto the blanket, cross-legged, the frills of her skirts only just covering her legs. So, what are we having? Barbecue and macaroni, special delivery. That looks yummy, thanks! You settle in to eat your food. Several times your meal is briefly interrupted by freshman girls who want to say hello to Mallory. Despite her cheerful smiles, none of them attempt a giant picnic. Perhaps your presence intimidates them. Ah, this is nice! We should have parties out here! Really, the student council should sponsor some sort of party for the whole student body. Or maybe one class at a time. We could have a giant pond look. Well, no, not that. Because not everyone can bring food. But we could order giant party subs, ten foot long ones. Or even have a real cookout with teachers at the grill. I think the council should do more positive things. People would like us better. Um. Hmm. There'll be more events later in the year. Oh, really? That's good. I don't know the whole schedule. I heard something about a Christmas pageant and a harvest festival, but I wasn't sure if we would be involved. After the meal, Mallory bounces to her feet. I should get back inside. Which girl would you, I say I'm the most like? Hmm. It was really nice seeing you, Elsa. Thank you for inviting me. Bye bye.
expelling a student should be a last resort because expulsion always damages the school's reputation. However, if a student is a danger to herself or others, it is better to remove her permanently. Um, hurry up already? Some of us have things to do? Yes, we're all here now. What do you need? We have a problem within the council. What? What sort of problem? One of you is a traitor. Everyone looks confused. Or do Vaughn and Rowan look slightly guilty? What? What are you talking about? Just keeping you on your toes. <laughs> that was a joke! If you're going to develop a sense of humor, be careful not to give the freshmen heart attacks. I assume you actually wanted to talk about midterms. Does the student council get extra assistance on tests? More the opposite. Council members are supposed to set a shining example. We can't afford to fail. So even if we have to take time off from our other responsibilities, we must be sure to study. It would be terrible to lose a member right before the Harvest Festival. If we get bad grades, we get kicked out! And like, lose your chance at being named a Queen of the Harvest? Everyone seems a bit more stressed out now. Annabelle and Adele agree to shake hands and call a truce. The council gains five karma. Flossie, the top art student in our class, is due to unveil her newest work at a special presentation for the Board of Trustees on October 27th. Make sure the painting she has designed is appropriate. A large number of French students all got the exact same grade on their recent test. Is someone cheating? Investigate students Haley, Ethel, Lily and Colette. Okay. Oh, everyone's highly stressed. What's the sedative do? Plus 10 to any action which targets a character. Okay. Uh, which character am I most like? Vaughn, I guess? She's kind of... She's personable in a way, but also kind of somber and keeps to herself. Really, we should just start searching everyone's rooms. the girls had different motives for being the traitor. I don't know. I've never got far enough. Flossie says the painting is supposed to be a surprise. What's in Haley's room? You find Haley's diary where she talks about how she's plotting to destroy her classmates by giving them enough rope to hang themselves. You may now detain Haley. Rowan is absent due to stress. Okay.
seems likely to backfire, so we probably won't do that. Let's sedate Flossie, I guess. Haley just sulks all through detention. Flossie doesn't seem to notice us as we follow her to the art studio. We may now search the art studio. Crumpled shed a crumpled sheet of paper containing a set of test answers. It's a cheat sheet. Okay, the art studio needs to be searched. Keep up with the focus on Haley because she's, she had the uh, she's suspicious diary entry. Searching the art studio for clues. It's a painting of a politician riding a purple unicorn on fire. This is completely inappropriate. You've got to talk her out of displaying this. The French test? I got a 90. I don't like to talk about my grades. Send ties to the supply closet. I think that'll do. I'm really starting to mistrust Vaughn. Alright, I admit it. I wrote the cheat sheet. I knew those losers couldn't resist, but I didn't use it myself. I didn't break any rules. No, I've got to stay true to my artistic vision. A pair of slippers. Just send Rowan to search the room.
train Mallory. Let's see if we can find this weird painting. Damn it. It's down in her room. The French test was awesome. I got an 85. But if they got different scores, does that mean they weren't using the cheat sheet? I wonder. Alright, let's visit Rowan. Go to Rowan's room and knock on the door. Hmm. Would you like to go to a movie? Uh, a movie? I... You wonder if she's going to refuse, but then, suddenly... Okay. I'll pick the film. I... I don't really want any snacks. No snacks. Let's look at the list together. Okay. Falling Silk. The historical movie. Because she said earlier she likes history. You settle in to watch a movie about a charming but impoverished gentleman who works his way up through European society by seducing strings of ever more powerful wives and widows. While not exactly explicit, the romantic scenes are frequent and prolonged, leaving little doubt as to his prowess in the bedroom department. Along the way, he falls in love with a young woman of good family who, as an unmarried virgin, is constantly chaperoned and out of his reach. At last, he assembles enough money to make an offer of marriage only to discover to his dismay that she is his secret half-sister from the days when his father was just such a seducer as he. When the credits begin to roll, Rowan touches your hand, indicating that you should wait for the crowds to clear out before leaving. Outside, she offers you a hesitant smile. That was nice. Yes? Just nice? It was practically erotica. Just nice? I... Well plotted? I mean, a lot of movies are too simple. Not that simple is always a bad thing. I liked it. Can we go now? The outing ended. You return to school. Weird. I should play Titanic Adventure Out of Time. Is that a PC game? Hey Altea, I know what you want to do. You want to go to open night at the coffee house. Open night? Are you a performer, Elsa? There's only one way to find out. Clever. Always keep them guessing. Alright, you've got my interest. Lead the way. The coffee house is a warm, intimate space. Altea signs up for a performance slot while you order the drinks. When her turn comes, she swaggers onto the small stage, wraps her hand around the microphone and draws it close to her lips. My love is like a red, red rose, a rosebud wet and tight. That's not the way the poem goes, but the lady knows I'm right. Her petals feathered, edges bloom along my tracing touch. Her perfume gently scents the room, but have I said too much? She continues in this vein, all smoldering glances and innuendo. The audience is eating it up. When she finally finishes, they drum their feet against the wooden floor and cheer. Altea takes her seat next to you and grins. I didn't know you were a poet. I'm not. I ripped it off. 
I'm good at saying the lines, not writing them. Your turn. Fine. Fine. Watch me. You take your place at the microphone. You make up a rhyme. You manage a series of short rhyming phrases that only slightly resemble a children's song. The audience is not impressed. The next performer marches onto the stage and you return to your seat. The rest of the show is unremarkable. Well, thank you for a very interesting evening. I'll see you later. Not every case is a mystery worth solving. Sometimes the wisest course of action can be to do nothing. Pick and choose which cases seem most important to pursue. Student Council has been summoned. Um, okay, Elsa, I'm here. What did you... Miss Talmadge? Good morning, girls. I'm glad to see that you've all arrived on time. We have a serious issue to discuss today. As I'm sure you're all aware, this has been a challenging year for St. Claudine's, especially within the Student Council. There is a reason for that. One of you is a disgrace. The floor is yours, Elsa. Shit, okay. Oh, dearie me. Goodness gracious. Well, I got to go forward with the courage of my convictions. Vaughn found a lot of lemons. Like, really, I think the smart way to play this game is to do a lot of edge cases. Yeah, there is no traitor is a viable option. But yeah, you do a lot of edge cases and then see what happens that way. Because if someone is too skilled at their task, they're going to succeed even if they even if the dice roll is fixed. Uh, is it possible or will it always be wrong? That I do not know. Let's go with Vaughn. What? Vaughn? Really? Elza, how could you? In order to preserve the reputation of St. Claudine's and the authority of the Student Council, the traitor will be stripped of her position and expelled. No. Please report at once to the headmaster's office. The rest of the council stands stunned as one of their number is cast out. We have more pleasant business to conduct today. This weekend, St. Claudine's will be hosting the annual Harvest Festival, ruled over by the queens of summer and winter. Elza, have you chosen a partner to stand beside you as your fellow queen? No, I'm going to pick Rowan. Excellent. Do you know what happens if you pick the wrong girl? I don't remember. I think something might happen at the Harvest Festival. I'll see you both later this week for your costume adjustments. Now you'd better all get on with your schoolwork. After that, the others leave the room quickly and silently. No one remains to speak to you. Not even Rowan. A special assembly is called to announce Vaughn's expulsion and make her the scapegoat for any mistakes the student council has made this year. The council gains 25 karma. We're the best. Now that Vaughn has been expelled, her room must be quickly searched for clues about her fellow conspirators. Rumour has it that a secret society is forming among the student body, and Kelly and Willow may be the latest members. Find out if this group poses a, st poses a threat to the school's reputation. School property has been defaced in the patio. Strange swirls and messages have been painted over the available surfaces. Investigate. Clues. 20 lemons. Yes. Everyone's still a bit stressed out, which is fair. Thias.
bullying me won't change my mind about my art. I've hidden my painting to keep it safe. What does Vaughn have in her room? Too close to call. You try to read the painted messages, but they don't make any sense. It's like they're intentionally cryptic or meaningless. Maybe I am a member of a secret group, but it's a secret. Just a coincidence. Officially. Altea and Mallory are both absent. Everyone's stress is pretty high. Baseball bat. Not bad. Flossie doesn't seem to notice you as you follow her to the attic. That must be where she's hidden the painting. If you find it, you can destroy it. You may now search the attic. Vaughn's family insisted on having all of her belongings returned. Whatever clues she may have had are gone now. Well... Yeah, no. painting. Oh, too close to call. Maybe Rowan was the traitor. Yes, Rowan was the other suspect. Kelly doesn't seem to notice you as you follow her to the cafeteria. Poor the trustees were shocked when Flossie revealed a painting of a politician riding a purple unicorn on fire. It's a scandal. The graffiti artist is struck again. Search isn't going to do much. Stakeout will probably be best. This doesn't look good. Ah, I'm sure it'll be fine, don't worry. This won't all. Backfire horribly. Failed. You stand around and wait, but you don't see anybody. All of a sudden, someone, something pushes you from behind. You turn to follow, but you feel dizzy and collapse. Afterwards, you find a strange paper symbol taped to your back. Stand around, but nothing happens at the patio. High heels. Add to your intimidation. Mm. Oh, that thing taped to your back is a cursed charm.
there we go. Eventually you see Diana and several other girls sneak in and hold what looks like some kind of seance. With candles and chanting and giggling. Probably harmless, but it would be quite a scandal if it were reported. You may now question, harass, detain, suspend and expel Diana. Nothing happens at the patio. At the end of October, the city gathers at St. Claudine's for the annual Harvest Festival. Patrons, alumni and their families. Parents hoping their daughters will earn admission or greeting. The students they rarely see. Those who appreciate organic foods and handcrafts. And those who flock to free entertainment. The main stage hosts a number of small performances throughout the day. But the unmissable event is the tribute to the queens of the seasons. You and your partner. The two of you have a little more than an hour yet before you are required to report for your duties. So, do you want to look at anything? Puppet show! Okay. You settle in to watch a story about a pet cat who gets lost in the woods and needs the help of experienced wild creatures to survive until a crisis occurs and the pet's knowledge of humans is needed to save the day. At the end, all the animal puppets sing a little song about friendship and sharing. After you've had some time to look around the festival, you report backstage to be helped into your costumes. The themes of summer and winter, harvest and renewal remain the same from year to year, but the specific costumes are tailored to each royal pair. There will never be another exactly like you. Above the rich colour of your dress, feathers tickle your bare shoulders. You can hear the announcers on stage proclaiming your entrance. It's time. The announcer continues. Your Harvest Queens, Elsa Gabrielle Jackson and Rowan Tallulah Gray. Now it is your job to stand and smile while the attendees present to you their tributes. The students and other guests only bring flowers, but you'll be getting a pile of gifts from the various stall holders. From this moment, you and Rowan are the queens of all you survey. Oh, come on, I was about to stop that. Losing 10 reputation. The enchanting handbag belonging to Gabrielle has vanished. Location returned to handbag. A shipment of supplies has gone missing. Protractors and compasses to construct shapes. If those supplies aren't found by November 7th, the special geometry lesson will have to be cancelled. Caitlin, Mary Lou, Frida and Joanne are in that class. Do they know anything? Let's see if that's the same as last time. I'd be ever so happy if it was. Everyone's practicing witchcraft in this school. Jeez. Found Gabrielle's diary. She writes about how much she dislikes Jessie and how she has a plan for her. Oh. She pretended the bag was stolen. That's odd. There's a box here containing sets of watercolor paints. You may now search the art studio. Missing school supplies? Don't know, don't care. Soap rumors? 
An envelope is sitting in the student council in tray addressed to Elsa Jackson, care of St. Claudine Student Council. As before, the envelope bears no return address. Careful not to mar the printing, you slide the edge of your school engraved letter opener into the crease and cut the envelope open. Inside is another tear stamped black card and a strip of paper, so flimsy you can almost see through it. The printer that ran this must have been almost out of ink as the words are a faded grey. Friday, November 4th, 5pm. Old Forest, come alone. Does this have something to do with Vaughn? Perhaps on Friday there will be answers. Alright, we'll talk to Gabrielle about her obvious plot. We'll have Rowan search the art studio. And we'll send Thias to the training room. I don't think Altea will succeed at this guarding, but we gotta use up some of those bad items. I remember Jesse asking me about my handbag. You're a liar. We found the missing supplies. They got delivered to the wrong room. See, that was an innocent case. Call. All right. Just Tyus to guard. Like the sound of the dice rolling, it's very satisfying. Gabrielle doesn't seem to notice you following her, probably because while you're stalking her, she's stalking Jesse. Nothing happens at the patio. Alright, get the truth out of Gabrielle. All oh, right, I admit it. I planted the handbag on Jesse. It was just a joke. Joke my ass. Try to get kids expelled. Well, I didn't get to read that because this popped up. Tonight is the night of the mysterious meeting. The invitation said to go alone, but... Okay, what was the last thing that happened on this? Felicia was intercept intercepted before she's about to paint on the walls. Okay.
fine, fine. I'll tell all my friends not to write on the walls again. You hide yourself and watch quietly, but no one arrives. After a while, you search the area, but the only clue you find is another black card stapled against the bark of a tree. What's going on? On the weekend, your minions have the chance to relax and unwind. Stress is reduced by 10. Among the free gifts received as part of the harvest tributes was a pair of free tickets to a travelling carnival. This is the last week that they'll be in town. As it is only appropriate to share them with your fellow queen, you find yourself standing at Rowan's door. Yes. Would you like to go to the carnival with me? Alright. You lead the way and she follows without a word. Where the boots of the school harvest festival tended to the sedate and sophisticated, the little Candyland carnival is a melange of flashing lights and hawking vendors. Thuds and shrieks of laughter advertised in nearby bumper cars, while the ferris wheel turns slowly overhead. Uh, yeah, I had Roan scout ahead in the old forest. There is an option to go alone, I didn't take it. I wonder if I should have, actually. Roan walks a few paces behind you, making no comment about the noise and the bustle around her, although you can catch her gaze lingering on some of the rides that she passes. Is there anything you want to see? I don't know. Come on, give me something. Huh? If you don't take charge, you could be standing here all day. Ferris wheel! Okay. You take your places in line and wait for your turn on the ride. For many people, a shared carriage would be a prelude to a private conversation or even a romantic moment. Rowan, however, seems content to sit and look out the little window at the park below. The wheels turn, you rise and fall and are eventually back where you started. After the ride, Rowan simply stands there, staring past you and saying nothing, as usual. What do you want to do next? Whatever you like. What is your problem? What problem? You're bored. No, I'm fine. Without protest, Rowan falls into line behind you. It's much easier to navigate the carnival once you realize that you don't need to waste time asking for Rowan's opinion on anything. You spend the rest of the day doing whatever you like best. As closing time approaches, Rowan waits for your command. You're welcome. Together you return to St. Claudine's. Well past curview, on Sunday night, you hear something tapping at your window. A scrap of paper is taped to the glass, fluttering in the chill night breeze. Opportunity knocks, old forest, come now or be left behind. And beneath it, a black card with that telltale carmine streak. You can just glimpse the dark outline of a figure slinking across the grounds towards the forest. There's no time to rouse your minions. If you don't follow now, whoever that is will get away. Let's go. You slip on your shoes and follow the figure into the dark. Your shoes meet fallen leaves not with a crunch but a squelch, rain rising from its grave to drag you under. Your white clothing shines like a signal flare in the moonlight. Your summoner should have no difficulty spotting your approach. Elsa Jackson, you have been tapped. Who are you? An elder sister. You are not allowed to know anything more. Not until you have joined us. The Red Mask Society is a sisterhood made up of those who are clever and powerful. We position ourselves so that we may help one another. We can ease your matriculation to the university of your choice 
and then sue to ensure the advancement of your career. We can be of great use to you, if you are of use to us. Take off that mask if you want to talk. You are not easily intimidated. That is a trait we value. You have passed the first test. If you complete your induction, you will have access to far more than a handful of student minions. Our members are placed in cor corporations and governments around the world. But your identities and my own must remain secret until you've earned your rank. What do you want me to do? A simple task, well within your powers as student council president. She tosses a thick envelope onto the ground between you. This is your assignment. Complete it and you will be rewarded. Fail and you will be punished. With those words, she vanishes into the night. Hmm. That was weird. Marcy has been heard saying that her friends Effie and Marikela are planning a surprise that will shock the entire school. Strange moaning sounds are coming from the auditorium. Okay. The Red Mask Society demands that Jamie be convinced to drop out of St. Claudine's by November 25th. It should look like it was her own idea and not your doing. Begin by separating her from her friends, Viola, Ikaterini, and Willy. Hmm. I think we're going to call it there for now. That's a really good kind of first chapter. I wonder if that means if we got it right and Vaughn was the traitor. Because I don't remember for sure, but I think there's a bad end if you pick the wrong traitor. Either way, I think we'll come back to this. Maybe not straight away. Maybe we'll do more Breath of Fire, but... No, we'll definitely come back to this and see what's going on. I, myself, am now intrigued into what is going on with this Red Mask Society. Alright, we'll call it there. Uh, thanks anyone who stopped by. This seems like it was a pretty quiet stream tonight, probably because it wasn't Breath of Fire. Um, I'll probably be streaming again tomorrow, roughly the same time. Have a good night everyone, and take care. Bye!